my frustration, my real frustration of trying to keep this girl serious, trying to keep her from crying, trying to keep her focused um, to get past her fear and her ego. It just did not jive with my right thing, and I didn't trust him. I felt like he wasn't serious. If you've ever watched Dirty Dancing, then you are familiar with the electric chemistry between Baby and Johnny, portrayed by the talented Patrick Swayze and Jennifer Grey. Their on-screen connection created one of cinema's most iconic romantic duos, leaving a lasting impact even three decades after the film's release. As Dirty Dancing rose to fame captivating audiences worldwide, the stars behind it, Patrick Swayze and Jennifer Grey, earned admiration for their exceptional performances. However, behind the scenes, things weren't always smooth sailing with a lot of tensions occurring off-screen. Join us as we delve into the off-screen relationship of the stars of Dirty Dancing and the real reason why she couldn't stand the late Patrick Swayze. But before we jump into the real reason she couldn't stand Patrick Swayze, it is important to understand the remarkable life of Jennifer Grey and Patrick Swayze and how this led to their inevitable clashes. Let's get started. The Legendary Dirty Dancing Stars Jennifer Grey, an American actress born on March 26, 1960, made her acting debut in the film Reckless. She gained recognition with her role in the teen comedy Ferris Bueller's Day Off. However, it was her portrayal of Frances Baby Houseman in Dirty Dancing that propelled her to international fame and earned her a Golden Globe Award nomination. Grey's filmography also includes Red Dawn, The Cotton Club, Bloodhounds of Broadway, Bounce, Red Belt, The Wind Rises, In Your Eyes, Duck Duck Goose, and Bittersweet Symphony. In addition to her film career, Grey has appeared in various television projects. She starred in made-for-TV films like Murder in Mississippi, Criminal Justice, and If the Shoe Fits. From 1999 to 2001, she played herself in the series It's Like You Know, Gray showcased her dancing skills by winning season 11 of Dancing with the Stars and portrayed Judy Myers in the Amazon Prime video comedy Red Oaks. She has also lent her voice to characters in films like Duck Duck Goose and the animated television series Phineas and Ferb. On the other hand, Patrick Wayne Swayze, born on August 18, 1952, was an American actor, dancer, and singer-songwriter. He was renowned for portraying memorable lead characters, ranging from romantic to tough and comedic roles. Swayze's charm and appearance earned him the title of Sexiest Man Alive by People magazine in 1991. Throughout his career, Swayze received three Golden Globe Award nominations for Best Lead Actor in a Motion Picture Comedy or Musical. These nominations recognized his performances in Dirty Dancing Ghost and to Wong Fu, Thanks for Everything, Julie Newmar. He also showcased his talent in action-packed films like Roadhouse and Point Break. In 1997, he was honored with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Beyond acting, Swayze co-wrote and performed the hit song She's Like the Wind and was posthumously recognized with the Rolex Dance Award in 2012. Sadly, Swayze passed away from pancreatic cancer in 2009 at the age of 57. So what was the tension that loomed between these two great stars and what was the reason why Jennifer Grey couldn't stand Patrick Swayze? Keep watching to know. The blockbuster of the 90s Dirty Dancing Dirty Dancing, a beloved romantic drama and dance film that starred in 1987, was crafted by the talented trio of Eleanor Bergstein, Linda Gottlieb, and Emile Ardolino. Starring the dynamic duo of Patrick Swayze and Jennifer Grey, it revolves around the tale of Frances Baby Houseman, played by Jennifer Grey, who finds herself swept off her feet by the charming dance instructor Johnny Castle, portrayed by Patrick Swayze. Inspired by Bergstein's upbringing, the screenplay initially destined for another project found its home in Dirty Dancing after a series of twists and turns. Despite facing obstacles in production, including management changes, the film eventually found its footing under the guidance of Vestron Pictures, with Artelino at the helm and Gottlieb producing. Taking place in the beautiful settings of Lake Lure, North Carolina, and Mountain Lake, Virginia, the movie's captivating music by John Morris and stunning dance routines, choreographed by Kenny Ortega, kept its enchanting appeal alive for viewers. After debuting at the renowned Cannes Film Festival, 
and later reaching theaters worldwide, Dirty Dancing quickly captured the hearts of audiences, earning a staggering $214 million. The performances of Gray and Swayze, as well as the infectious soundtrack curated by Jimmy Iyanar, which spawned multiple chart-topping hits, received lots of thumbs up and commendations. Notably, I've Had the Time of My Life, performed by Bill Medley and Jennifer Warnes, garnered prestigious awards, including an Academy Award, a Golden Globe, and a Grammy. The film's success birthed a franchise encompassing a television series, reality competitions, a prequel titled Dirty Dancing Havana Nights, and a stage adaptation that received rave reviews across various countries. Additionally, a made-for-television musical adaptation aired in 2017, paving the way for an eagerly anticipated sequel slated for release in 2025, with Grey reprising her iconic role. Patrick Swayze was neither the first nor second choice for his role. As Johnny Patrick Swayze was surprisingly not the original pick for Johnny's role in the movie Dirty Dancing. That honor initially went to Val Kilmer, who declined. Kilmer, fresh off the success of Top Gun, was concerned about potentially being cast beneath his newfound Hollywood status and opted for a role in Willow instead. Despite his regrets, Swayze ultimately shined in the role, showcasing how sometimes the unexpected choice is the right one. While Titanic star Billy Zane was considered next, his chemistry with Jennifer Grey fell short during the screen test, leading to Swayze's immediate selection. Their natural chemistry, evident from the start in their screen test, dispelled initial doubts about their ability to work together, especially considering rumored tensions from their previous collaboration in Red Dawn. However, once they began rehearsing the iconic dance moves, any skepticism about their compatibility quickly evaporated. The resilience of the dirty dancing casts, the iconic movie setting, and crew. The iconic lake scene in Dirty Dancing, where Johnny tries to teach Baby to dance in the water, is deeply ingrained in fans' memories worldwide. Yet, this pivotal moment posed its own challenges. Shot at a North Carolina lake in chilly October, the bone-chilling water temperature added authenticity to the character's struggle, but also caused unintended physical effects for the actors. As Patrick Swayze and Jennifer Grey submerged themselves in the icy waters, the cold took its toll. Amidst the passionate dance lesson, the freezing temperature turned their lips blue, prompting the filmmakers to avoid close-up shots during the scene. The movie was also set in several other iconic locations. It started with Baby and her family heading to a Catskills resort for the summer. Apart from the lake scene, filming took place in Virginia during the fall, and despite the chilly weather, the cast had to endure and continue filming. To maintain the illusion of summertime, they even had to spray paint the autumn leaves green. When it came to the talented crew, Luck seemed to be on the director's side when selecting the cast and crew. Jennifer Grey inherited her dancing skills from her father, Joel Grey, a renowned cabaret performer. Mrs. Schumacher, the cunning thief in the movie, was portrayed so brilliantly that they couldn't have asked for a better replacement. Initially, the directors had considered Dr. Ruth Westheimer for the role, but she declined, fearing it might impact her career. Consequently, Paula Truman ended up with the role. The Signature Lift The iconic lift from Dirty Dancing has become a staple in Hollywood's dance culture, appearing in various films as a cameo. Notably, Ryan Gosling demonstrated his skill in this lift in the movie Crazy Stupid Love, alongside Emma Stone. This scene not only pays tribute to Dirty Dancing, but also gives a modern twist to the classic move, as Ryan Gosling effortlessly performs it with Emma Stone. Interestingly, Jennifer Grey, the original leading lady of this iconic lift, had the chance to witness this tribute firsthand. As a huge fan of Ryan Gosling, she attended a screening of Crazy Stupid Love with her husband. The excitement peaked when, unexpectedly, Gosling mentioned Jennifer Grey by name within the film. Also, the dance sequence at the film's finale has become a cultural touchstone in modern times. Even those unfamiliar with Dirty Dancing are familiar with its iconic routine and climactic lift. So influential is this moment that it not only has been recreated in other films, but also earned the 2008 TV Land Award for 
movie dance sequence you reenacted in your living room. Jennifer Grey also had a strong contender. Just like Patrick, Jennifer wasn't initially the first choice for her role either, and she wasn't originally cast as Baby. Sarah Jessica Parker was the top contender for the role in 1987. With her rising star status and previous success in the 1985 hit Footloose, Parker was a strong candidate. However, fate had other plans, and Jennifer Grey was given a final opportunity to demonstrate her ability to portray a teenager convincingly at the age of 27. Her exceptional performance in the screen test ultimately secured her the role. Despite some initial skepticism due to her age being 10 years older than the characters, Gray's five-minute audition dispelled any doubts and convinced everyone that she was perfect for the part. Writer's Attention to Comic Relief The writers of Dirty Dancing meticulously crafted moments of comedy throughout the screenplay, adding depth to the exhilarating storyline. The initial encounter between Baby Houseman brimming with independent optimism and the cynical dance instructor Johnny Castle was both awkward and endearing. Caught in the staff area after assisting Billy with watermelons, Baby finds herself in unfamiliar territory. Surrounded by dancers moving in a style alien to her, where bodies collide and hips sway, she feels like a fish out of water. Mesmerized by Johnny and his partner Penny's flawless dance moves, Baby is unable to look away. Eager to make a charming impression on Johnny, her first attempt at conversation results in a sheepish admission. I carried a watermelon. The realization of her blunder dawns on her immediately, and we cringe in empathy. In that moment, we share Baby's embarrassment, questioning her choice of words. However, Johnny surprises both Baby and the audience by choosing to dance with her shortly after, defying expectations. Dirty Dancing's box office success and international acclaim. Dirty Dancing may have cost $5 million, but when it hit theaters worldwide, it raked in a whopping $214 million. The success of the movie led to the creation of a stage adaptation in 2004. Since its debut in Sydney, the show has toured 13 cities across three continents, including London, Chicago, Los Angeles, Toronto, Boston, Berlin, Hamburg, and Utrecht. The five millionth ticket was sold on June 16th at London's Aldwych Theatre, bringing the total attendance in the UK to over one million people. Upon its opening in London in 2006, the musical sold out six months in advance, generating 11 million pounds, approximately $17.9 million, in advance sales, according to a report. Dirty Dancing's triumph extended beyond the silver screen, captivating audiences with its stage adaptation, which became a sensation from Chicago to Toronto and across Europe. Enthusiastic fans captivated with the iconic characters of Baby and Johnny harbor dreams of experiencing the magic of Dirty Dancing live on Broadway. In 1988, the film's monumental success spawned a television series adaptation featuring Paul Feig and Melora Hardin, the latter later gaining fame for her role as Jan on The Office. Despite its star power, the series was short-lived, comprising only 11 episodes, perhaps contributing to its relatively lesser-known status. Initially hesitant to contribute to the film's soundtrack, Bill Medley eventually seized the opportunity, recognizing it as a significant milestone in his career. He even considered Patrick Swayze his good luck charm, and went on to compose a song for another Swayze film, Ghost. Dirty Dancing's Unexpected Great Scene The dance training scene was a standout moment for numerous reasons. The music set the perfect vibe, the stars looked especially appealing in their workout attire, and witnessing Baby's growth as both a dancer and a young woman was thoroughly enjoyable. Amidst the various memorable moments in the montage, one particular sequence that stole the show was the endearing moment where Johnny tried to run his hand down Baby's side, resulting in uncontrollable laughter from her. The backstory behind this scene adds an extra layer of charm. Jennifer Grey, Baby, was exhausted from a long day of filming, causing her to burst into giggles when Patrick Swayze, Johnny, attempted the move. 
Swayze, also fatigued from the day's work, found himself genuinely annoyed with her. Director Emilio Ardolino, known for his penchant for capturing candid moments, had the cameras rolling even between scenes and he eventually captured the entire interaction on film. Upon reviewing the footage later, Ardolino recognized its brilliance and knew it had to be included in the final cut of the movie. Stage Adaptation and Musical The film was adapted into a stage musical titled Dirty Dancing, the classic story on stage in 2004. Produced by Jacobson Entertainment in Australia for $6.5 million, the musical was penned by Eleanor Bergstein and featured the same songs as the film, along with additional scenes. Chong Lim, known for his work as one of the composers for the 2000 Summer Olympics in Sydney, handled musical direction. The initial production starred Kim Valentine as Baby and Joseph Brown from the Sydney Dance Company as Johnny. While reviews were mixed, the production proved to be a commercial success, selling over 200,000 tickets during its six-month run. It also enjoyed sellout performances in Germany and London's West End, where it debuted at the Aldwych Theatre on October 23, 2006. The London production had the highest pre-sale in the city's history, earning £6 million, £12 million US dollars. By March 2011, over 1 million people had seen the musical in London, with tickets selling out six months in advance. After a five-year run, the original West End production closed in July 2011, before embarking on a two-year national tour. The show returned to the West End at the Piccadilly Theatre from July 13, 2013 to February 22, 2014, followed by a tour of the United Kingdom and the Republic of Ireland. Another West End revival took place at the Dominion Theatre from January 21 to April 29, 2023. In 2006, plans were underway for a New York production of the musical, following its success in other North American cities. It made headlines in May 2007 by breaking box office records on its first day of ticket sales in Toronto, Ontario, Canada, grossing $2 million. The production premiered on November 15, 2007 at the Royal Alexandra Theatre, featuring an all-Canadian cast with the exception of Monica West, Baby Houseman, Britta Lazenga, Penny, and Al Sapienza, Jack Houseman. Following its success in Toronto, the musical moved to Chicago, where it began previews on September 28, 2008, officially opening on October 19, 2008, and running until January 17, 2009. It then traveled to Boston from February 7 to March 15, 2009, and Los Angeles thereafter. An official American tour commenced in September 2014 at the National Theatre in Washington, D.C., with scheduled dates in 31 cities. Previews commenced on August 26, and the official opening night took place on September 2, Dirty Dancing Weekends. Dirty Dancing was filmed in Pembroke, Virginia, and three weeks in a year, the town hosted Dirty Dancing Weekends. It turned its connection to the iconic film into an annual tradition. These themed events offered visitors a chance to immerse themselves in the nostalgic world of the beloved movie. The town came alive with the spirit of the film during these weekends, allowing participants to relive the romance, dance to the timeless soundtrack, and experience the charm of Pembroke as seen in the classic movie scenes. The streets, once graced by Johnny and Baby, become a backdrop for fans to step back in time. One highlight of these weekends was the opportunity for visitors to try out the famous lift, immortalized by Patrick Swayze and Jennifer Grey in the film's climactic dance sequence. Continued success. Thanks to enthusiastic recommendations from viewers, the movie quickly rose to become the highest grossing film in the US within just 10 days, surpassing the $10 million mark. Its popularity didn't stop there. By November, it was gaining international recognition, grossing $63 million in the US alone within seven months of its release and inspiring a surge in dance class attendance nationwide. With a global box office total of $170 million, it ranked among the top grossing films of 1987. Its appeal continued to grow over time, 
becoming the first movie to sell a million copies on video and dominating video rentals in 1988. Patrick Swayze, the film's star, received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in 1997, and his videos remained in high demand, with over 40,000 copies sold monthly. Even a decade after its release, the film was selling 1 million DVDs annually, and by 2007, it had sold over 10 million copies. In a 2007 Sky Movies survey in the UK, Dirty Dancing was voted the most watched film by women, earning it comparisons to iconic franchises like Star Wars and acclaim as the Star Wars for girls. Its enduring relevance was highlighted in a 2021 recommendation by The Hollywood Reporter amid a dispute over abortion laws in Texas, praising Eleanor Bergstein's writing of the film. Jennifer Grey's complicated relationship with Patrick Swayze and why she couldn't stand him. Before they starred in Dirty Dancing, Patrick Swayze and Jennifer Grey worked alongside each other in the action film Red Dawn. The movie follows a group of teenagers who form a guerrilla army when World War III breaks out in the U.S. Before filming, the cast had to take part in eight weeks of military training to get in character, where it's reported Swayze acted as the tough leader. Not breaking character the whole time, Swayze reportedly ordered everyone around, which irritated Gray. Gray previously said how she thought there would be no spark between her and Swayze. But you either do or you don't. It's a weird thing. It doesn't have to do with whether you like someone or not. It's just you either have it or you don't, she said. After the pair did a screen test where Patrick lifted Jennifer above his head in the iconic dance move, they realized they had amazing chemistry. While they got along fine during filming, they were never close friends. Swayze mentioned occasional friction between them, with Gray bursting into tears or uncontrollable laughter at times, much to his frustration. Their on-set dynamics might explain Gray's reported dislike for Swayze. The director also noted some tension because Swayze, being a trained dancer, sometimes became frustrated while teaching Gray the steps. Despite their complicated dynamic, they always spoke respectfully of each other. Gray praised Swayze for his support in mastering the dance moves, highlighting his strength and protective nature. Swayze, before his passing in 2009, acknowledged their partnership as a teaching opportunity and praised Gray's acting skills. Not minding the speculations of a romantic relationship between the two stars, Gray revealed in an interview with The Guardian that their relationship was solely platonic. Patrick was a really good guy and really cared about me. He was always there for me, and I would have done anything for him. But we were also a little oil and water, she said. According to Gray, the tension in their relationship added depth to their character's on-screen connection. The difference was beautiful because it created a kind of energy, she explained. There's a push and pull. We were both trying to assert ourselves. Despite any lack of romantic involvement, Gray was preoccupied with her life, notably her relationship with Matthew Broderick. Reception, critical acclaim, and legacy. According to Rotten Tomatoes, Dirty Dancing scores a solid 72% based on reviews from 74 critics, with an average rating of 6, 30-10. Dirty Dancing impresses with its dazzling choreography and soulful tunes, overcoming various obstacles just like its endearing characters. Metacritic, another review hub, gives the film a decent score of 65 out of 100, based on 20 critics signaling a generally positive reception. Cinema score polls show audiences grading it an A, marking it as a hit on the big screen. The New York Times paints the film as a snapshot of 1963 America, orderly, prosperous, and full of promise. The reviews, however, are mixed. While Gene Siskel gives a hesitant thumbs up for Jennifer Grey's performance and character, Roger Ebert gives a firm thumbs down, criticizing its cliched storyline. Time magazine takes a middle ground, acknowledging the film's flaws but praising its infectious energy. In a retrospective take, Jezebel's Erin Carmen hails Dirty Dancing as the ultimate movie experience, lauding its significance for women and its subtle social commentary on class and gender. Abortion rights advocates laud the film as the benchmark for portraying abortion sensitively. Emphasizing the focus on the woman's well-being and future fertility, 
rather than moral debates. This portrayal, as noted by author Giannis Tsiomakis, stands out amidst contemporary films. Instead of the anticipated youthful audience, the movie attracted adult spectators who gave it excellent reviews. After seeing the movie once, a lot of people returned to the theater to see it again. In Sweden, the feminist art group Sisters of Jam displayed the phrase, nobody puts baby in a corner in white neon light at Umia Bus Square in 2008 and at Karlstad University in 2012. The resort where Dirty Dancing was filmed hosts themed weekend activities, including dance lessons, guided tours, film screenings, parties, and lawn games. Mount Holyoke College screens the film annually for incoming first years, particularly highlighting the line, Baby Starting Mount Holyoke in the Fall. Prequel and Sequel In 2004, a prequel movie titled Havana Nights hit the screens. Starring Romola Garay and Diego Luna, the story revolves around an American teenager discovering life through dance after her family moves to Havana, Cuba, just before the 1959 Cuban Revolution. Swayze made a cameo appearance as a dance instructor, earning $5 million for his role. Although the film performed decently at the box office, critics mostly panned it with negative reviews. Discussions about a Dirty Dancing sequel began back in 1988 with Vestron. Fast forward to 2020, and a sequel was officially announced with Jennifer Grey set to reprise her role as Baby. During CinemaCon 2022, Lionsgate, the current rights owner, unveiled that the film, tentatively titled DD, was in the works with Grey still on board. The film was initially slated for a February 2024 release, with Jonathan Levine set to direct. However, due to the 2023 SAG-AFTRA strike and delays in filming, Lionsgate decided to push back the release to an unspecified date in the summer of 2025. The Surgery That Destroyed Jennifer Grey's Career After Jennifer Grey's breakout roles in the beloved films Ferris Bueller's Day Off and Dirty Dancing, it seemed like Jennifer Grey was on the fast track to a thriving career in showbiz. However, a couple of nose jobs she underwent after Ferris Bueller ended up stripping away what made her unique as an actress, making it tough for her to land roles well into the 1990s. While most celebrity plastic surgeries aim to enhance one's appeal, Jennifer's experience with nose jobs in the late 1980s proved to be an unfortunate exception. Before her ill-fated surgeries, Jennifer Grey had established herself in Hollywood with notable roles in films like Red Dawn and Ferris Bueller's Day Off. But it was her starring role in Dirty Dancing alongside Patrick Swayze that truly catapulted her to fame. While Swayze continued to enjoy success in his acting career after starring in Dirty Dancing, Grey found herself facing a different fate after succumbing to the pressure to undergo nose surgery shortly after the film's release, ultimately diminishing her prospects in the industry. According to Gray, the nose job not only altered her appearance, but also robbed her of her identity and, consequently, her career trajectory. Unfortunately, Jennifer's journey with plastic surgery didn't end after one operation. She ended up needing a second surgery to correct the mistakes of the first. Although the second procedure salvaged her nose, it left her nearly unrecognizable, with even acquaintances like Michael Douglas failing to recognize her at public events. Interestingly, nose jobs seemed to be a familial affair for Gray, with both her parents having undergone the procedure. Despite early encouragement from her mother, Jennifer initially resisted the idea, believing in her own natural beauty. However, as industry pressures mounted, she eventually relented, only to realize too late the toll it would take on her career. Jennifer's nose was a defining feature that set her apart in Hollywood, and its alteration not only failed to enhance her career, but ironically hindered it. Over time, she grappled with accepting her new appearance, influenced not only by familial expectations, but also by societal pressures and remarks from figures like Andy Warhol, further complicating her journey of self-acceptance. Despite enduring relentless bullying, Jennifer Grey ultimately made the decision to undergo plastic surgery, driven by the allure of greater fame and fortune. 
It's a decision that, in hindsight, raises questions about the nature of success in Hollywood and the pressures actors face to conform to certain standards of beauty. Had Jennifer chosen a different path, perhaps she could have maintained her status as a star long after the release of Dirty Dancing. After all, her performance in the film captivated audiences and solidified her as a rising talent in the industry. However, as the 1990s approached, Jennifer found herself grappling with a stark reality. Despite her talent and previous success, the opportunities available to her seemed to dwindle. While it's tempting to attribute Jennifer's decline in career opportunities solely to her decision to undergo a nose job, the reality is likely more complex. Hollywood has a long history of favoring certain physical attributes, and actors, especially women, often feel pressure to conform to unrealistic beauty standards. Jennifer's experience serves as a poignant reminder of the double-edged sword of fame, where success can sometimes come at the cost of one's authentic self. In the end, Jennifer's story serves as a cautionary tale about the perils of chasing external validation and the importance of staying true to oneself in the face of societal pressures. Despite the challenges she faced, Jennifer's journey is a testament to resilience and the enduring power of self-acceptance. Thank you for watching this video. We hope you found it enlightening. To stay up to date and know more about your favorite celebrity, tap on the link that pops up on your screen. See you there.